with Hastings? I order that you be held without charge and that your case be turned over to the juvenile authorities. Next case. Joseph Hastings, Your Honor. He lives out on the west side. Burglary. He was arrested last night after breaking into the Mackison warehouse on Walnut Street. Another boy got away. They are taking cigarettes and other merchandise. Here's the paper, sir. All right, officer. <coughs> Sit down, Joe. Well. What happened to you? Want to tell me about it? Well, that's what I'm here for. What do you say, Joe? Well, I... Uh, I don't know it. Oh, it was a crazy thing to do. I don't know what to say. Well, then, suppose I ask you a few questions. You've never been in trouble before. That is, you've never been arrested before. That's right, Judge. What about your family, Joe? Your father and mother? Oh, they're swell. And they'll think that I'm... Now, oh. don't worry about that. Have you got any brothers or sisters? I have a kid sister, Betty. And you and Betty have good times together? Oh, sure. My folks are swell. They let Betty and I do just about what we please. Just about what you please, Joe? What do you mean by that? Well, we can go out when we want to and do what we want to and go wherever we want to. Just anything, Judge. Just anything, Joe? You mean you could go anywhere you wanted to? Anytime you wanted to? To any kind of a place? Even down to Mackison's Warehouse for cigarettes? Oh, no, no, not that. We could do what we wanted to, but, well, but not that. Do you smoke, Joe? Well, my dad does, and he's all right. Are you on the school team? No, I, I didn't make it. Does fellows on the team smoke? Oh, no, the coach won't let them. But you do, Joe. Well, all the fellows do. All the fellows who can't make the team. Yes, Judge, I, I guess you can't smoke and win. But uh, why did you go to the warehouse, Joe? Well, we, we just didn't have anything to do or something. I, no, I don't know, Judge. All right, Joe. <clears throat> and now, um, what about school? Have you been attending regularly? Oh, playing hooky, eh? With whom? Come on, tell me about it. Well, I have a pal. He's in my class, and... We never have a place to go. So we meet after school, and we just sort of hang around together. Oh, Bob is smart. He's been around and knows a couple of things. He's the only guy I know who is a pal. But what about your dad, Joe? Well, he's all right. But with Bob, it's different. He understands. Oh, we're pals, Judge. Is that why you were both out there at the warehouse? Who said he was there? I never did. Oh, what if we did smoke? What if we did have a beer? Oh, so you had some beer. You mean that... Before you went out to the warehouse. Well, Judge, Bob and I didn't mean any harm. We had a couple of beers at a tavern and ran out of cigarettes. Bob said he knew where to get some, so just left. We went down to the Mackinson warehouse and helped ourselves to cigarettes. But just as we were coming out of the place, they caught us. Bob, I mean my pal, he got away. But they caught me. Well, Joe, by catching you this first time, it may never happen again. Now, just a minute. I've asked your parents to come down here. They're in the waiting room now. 
They're awfully unhappy about this. Hey, John, will you ask Mr. and Mrs. Hastings to step in here, please? Yes, sir. The object of the juvenile court is to give help in cases like this. About this son of yours. He's a good boy. Why do you suppose he's been playing hooky from school? What? He has? Joe? What? Now, just a minute. You act as if Joe's playing hooky from school were on trial here, but it's not. That's one thing. Joe's here on a charge of burglary, and that's quite a different matter. You didn't know that he'd played hooky from school, and you didn't know that he'd robbed a warehouse. Joe didn't become a burglar suddenly. Bob and the places they went together had something to do with it. Why did he go to those places? Did you know where he was going? So long, folks. See you later. And your daughter? Do you know where she goes? Bye, Mother. I'm going out now. Are they scouts? Do they go to Sunday school? What do scouts have to do with this? And Sunday school. In all my experience, I've had no boy scouts and no girl scouts in my court. And what's more, no young people who attend Sunday school regularly were ever brought in here. Why, Judge, I never realized the importance of religious training. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt... I haven't said those for a long time. I agree with J. Edgar Hoover that every child should be taught the Golden Rule. And I might add the Ten Commandments and how they apply in our modern life. Oh, Judge, we thought we were doing everything we could to make them happy. They have their friends in a couple times a year. We try to make them all feel at home. We serve beer. That's so much better than going to the taverns. Mrs. Hastings, I assure you, I know what you mean. You have only the thought of keeping your children near you, in the home. But what you both forget is, it's not where you drink, but what you drink that counts. In your living room or in any public place, no matter what you call it, Alcohol is alcohol, whether it's in beer, wine, or whiskey. But beer never hurt anyone. The National Safety Council has found that the amount of alcohol in a glass or two of beer is enough to interfere with good judgment and make some safe drivers. In the same way it interferes with and changes everyday judgments and makes people do things they wouldn't otherwise do such as Joe going down to that warehouse. He knew that was wrong. And what about your daughter? I don't want Betty in here, too. I never thought beer hurt me any. We thought we were doing right. You have a responsibility for Joe and Betty. You have a good home. You can give them every opportunity. Crime begins in little things. For instance, I recall at a high school tournament, visiting students did $300 damage to furniture. They forgot good manners. They didn't know the golden rule. Lack of respect for the rights of others leads to crimes like stealing. Judge, what about our children today? What more can we do? Young people don't want to get into trouble. They want fun and companionship. A boy like Joe isn't really underneath the bad you. Often, he's very good. He has courage, imagination, sensitivity. You, young people everywhere, bubble with ideas. In many places, they have organized to express ideas, to better their own communities, their own lives. Youth is active, eager to learn, eager to accomplish, 
to do things for itself. There are ways they may be helped. There are many existing agencies that can assist youth in its search for wholesome, hearty activities. In the church, with its teachings and its leadership, with its activities, its opportunities, youth seeks and finds those things it expects and wants of the world. Do you know that J. Edgar Hoover says that there would be practically no crime among youth if young people attended Sunday school regularly during their formative years? And important every day to every youth is his home. In the home, in every home, the proper influence, the good example must be present. That's the parent's job, your job. The children should have in the home the right environment and example to learn good manners and develop good habits. It's the parent's job to ensure for the home those responsibilities and activities that will make fine characters. The home is the center of the child's life. In fairness to them, it should be morally and socially rich. So, you see, it's up to all of us, to you and to me, to adults and youth. You can send Joe and Betty safely forth into the world. Youth asks only a chance. It wants to achieve. It is justly proud and hopeful and courageous. Youth holds its head high. It looks to a better world. I think I know what you mean now, Judge. John, now that we have a plan, we can really make a home. Well, with this new outlook, you can give Joe and Betty a better opportunity in life. I'm going to give you a chance to make Joe's life a little better. I'm going to return him to your custody on probation. But first, I want to talk to him alone. He'll meet you in the outer office in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge. Now, Joe, this is just between us. Before you started for the Magazine Warehouse, you had some beer. That's right, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's one reason why you did it, Joe. The alcohol in the beer dulls your judgment. And you did what otherwise you would have known to be wrong. Keep away from it. It'll never help you. It's an enemy. Never a friend. What's that, Joe? Well, it's a head. The brain. Yes. And that's what goes wrong with you when you take a drink. Your brain goes wrong, your thinking goes wrong, and you go wrong. It may take only one drink, Joe, and you lose your sense of caution. Your judgment is impaired. You just lose all the way around. Alcohol is not a stimulant. It's a narcotic. It dulls the brain. You've had Shakespeare in school, haven't you? Yeah, some. Well, if you don't remember anything else of his, remember this. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. And now, Joe, so long. Remember that, to thine own self be true. 
I'm going to make a new start, Judge. Thanks for putting me on the right track. Just fine, sir. Good. You look it. And do you remember what I told you? Well, uh, I've learned a lot from what you've said, Judge. To thine own self be true. I'll never forget that. I'm off cigarettes and beer forever. I'm glad to hear that, Joe. You've learned the hard way. I hope others don't have to, sir. Thanks to you, Judge, home is a different place. I'm a different fellow. Well, you proved yourself. Your probation has ended. Good luck. Goodbye, sir. And thanks again. You know, seeing that boy walk out of here and knowing the kind of lad he is, well, it makes you feel kind of warm and happy inside. Like saving a life. a good citizen, an upright and true man. <laughs>